and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. We're about to embark on a new year. And in 2022, we should think about Psalms 100, where it tells us to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. We are serving the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. 2022 20, will be a good time for the servants of the Lord to become true servants of the Lord. You know, the world really needs to find God. And 2020, 2022 will be a good time for the world to find the one true living God. Now we hear people talk about finding God, but many We'll find God, we pray in 2022, and find peace with God. But the thing is, they have to find the one true and only living God. The problem often is that those who claim they found God never have the answers of how they found God, never seem to really understand how one is to come to God. And this is one of the things that we as servants of Christ need to try to improve upon in our works. We know that the best way any of us can find God, the best way any of us can be assured we are doing God's will, is the best way to make sure you're on the right road to finding the one and true only living God, our Father. The best way to be assured you are following the true God who is the creator of all things is to hear his word. We, never, we need to learn to listen to what it is God wants us to do. We need to understand. We need to know you are the Lord. We need to know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. And we are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Everyone, as we understand, is a creation of God. It is a fact. And the fact is not everyone is a child of God because one has to choose to become a child of God and one has to choose to do it the way God lays out. We need to learn not only to hear the word of God and not only to study the word of God to show thyself approved unto God, but we also have to learn to act upon what God tells us in the word and to follow and to do what God instructs us to do in his word. We are to hear the word of the Lord our God. We are to listen to the word of the Lord our God. We are to study the word of the Lord our God. And we are to act upon the word of the Lord our God. If we want to find a home in heaven, we are to obey the word of our Lord our God that is given to us by our Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. We need to hear, we need to listen, we need to study, and we need to act. All our actions are, that are required to be a good and faithful servant of our Lord, our God, and there is action required. And in 2022, I pray that more and more people soon understand this. The Bible is one of the greatest blessings bestowed by God on the children of men. It has God for its author, salvation, for its end, and truth without any mixture of the matter. It is all pure in truth and was given to us by Jesus Christ so that we could find peace while we were here on this earth with God, the one true living God, in heaven. That way our souls will be in, out of harm's way forever and ever. The commandment to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, they are sound words. They are a command. They are given to us 
through Paul, an inspired writer of God. And we must learn to do this. We must learn to put it into action for our very, very existence of where we should live next life depends upon this. The first thing we need to understand about God is that he has given to us all the answers to what we need to do in order to get out of this world alive. And he has given us the complete written words of life right here. And it is very important that we trust in him and we follow what it is we are to do. And the Lord our God will not burden us with anything we cannot handle. But we need to understand it's more than just faith. There are actions to become a servant of God. Some men will tell you about their faith, but will never ever do any of the works. And we are told about in the Bible of all the works. So it would be a good idea for those who are servants of Christ, those who are servants of God, to use this year 2022 and learn to do the godly works that are required of us. Brother James tells us again, this is why we must study. And we know that we, Brother James tells us, and again, understand, this is why we must study to show they self approved unto God. For we find that Brother James tells all who have ears that God, in James 2, 14, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? For brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not these things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, if faith had not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show these my faith by my works. <clears throat> thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The uh, devils also believe and tremble. Those words there should merely wake people up because the devil knows there's one God and only one God. And he trembles as we should. But will thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham my father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up on the altar? See thou faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed upon him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see then how by <clears throat> you see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rehab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. The Bible, the Word of God. The Bible, our instruction book. It is our basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible was given to us by Jesus Christ. The Bible given to us, think about that, by Jesus Christ, the written Word of God, his only begotten son left the splendors of heaven came to this world to make sure that we have the written word so we understand how to get out of this world alive 2022 is a good time that we should surely start understanding this remember even so faith if it had not works is dead being alone those are very true words and the same as that thou believest there's one God, thou doest well. The devil also believes and trembles. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? So many people talk about faith. You hear people talking all the time about faith. But they really don't do anything with the faith. They don't follow God's word. They don't do anything. So many believe in Jesus, but will not obey Jesus. You know, we come together on the first day of each and every week in order to break bread around the Lord's table. Why? Because Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, made sure that the apostles knew this. The apostles brought it on this side of the cross. And we know from the Bible that what was bound 
on earth by the apostles is bound in heaven. They were told by Jesus to do this, and it is a command from our Lord and Savior that on the first day of each and every week, we come around the Lord's table, and we take of the bread, and we take of the fruit of the vine. This, in 2022, should be our goal to make sure that every first day of the week, we come to the assembly. Listen to God. Listen to what he's telling the children of Israel. And it's the same as what we have today, if we understand the nature of God. In Isaiah 43, verse 8, God told them, Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled, who among them can declare this, and show us four more things. Let them bring forth their witness, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it is truth. You are my witness, saith the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have shown when there was no strange gods among you. Therefore ye are my witness, saith the Lord, that I am God. Ye before the day was I he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? Think about this in the text of today. For we are Christians the spiritual Jews. We are the true worshipers of the one and true only living God. And we know God, and God knows us because of the blood of Jesus. This we need to get people to understand in 2022. Are we not today as the servants of God to bring forth the blind that have eyes and the deaf that have ears and teach him about Jesus and the ways of the Father in heaven? Are we not today the witnesses of Christ? Are we not the servants of Christ? This is a commitment that we need to make this coming year to be true servants of Christ and to get the gospel message out more and more into this world and to our community would be great. <clears throat> Again, God says, Ye are my witness, saith the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Bring me there, <clears throat> that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. There is only one true living God. And he is the one that will be forever and ever and ever. Amen. And he says, I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. As a child of God, we are chosen. Because God shows those who listen to the gospel, not only listen to the gospel, but obey the gospel message, become born again, a new creature in Christ, come up out of that watery grave, and we become a servant of Christ. And we have, because of that, because we chose to be a servant of Christ, we then become a child of God because we have the gift of the Holy Ghost. We are the ones who have to teach and preach and show the gospel message to the world. Think about what Brother Paul, the inspired writer of God, tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And again, these are words that we need to sit down and think about. Because Paul was a great apostle for the apostles, for the Gentiles, I'm sorry. He was a great apostle that was sent there to teach the Gentiles. And he was one that spread the gospel message far and wide and had other people that he taught to do the same thing. He tells us in chapter 8, verse 4, We know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, 
But to us there is but one God the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. <clears throat> God makes it clear that he is the only God. He is the father of all of us that choose to be his children. There is one creator who created the creations. And there is one savior, one way that he accepts us to become a child of God and to live with him for eternity in heaven forever and ever. In Leviticus 19 verse 1. God says, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. In verse 4, he says, turn ye not into idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. Today, in today's world, we have so many that worship idols. Worship so many things. They can't be here on the first day of each and every week because they have an idol in the way. They can't go to the Lord in prayer because they have an idol in the way. They can't study out on a daily basis because there's idols in the way. Let's make 2022 a year where we get rid of these idols. And we worship the Lord our God instead of these idols. You know, we know and we hear and we kind of laugh about, but we really need to clean this up a little bit. And we need to make sure we talk to our children and grandchildren. For we have so many today that will worship a tree, they'll worship a fish, they'll worship a rat, they'll worship all the creation. But they do not worship the Creator. And this is because there's mass confusion among men today. Some worship gold, gold and silver and jewels more than God. Who is the Creator of all these things? 2022 is a good year to stop this nonsense and worship the creator instead of the creation. We are thankful for the creation. We worship the creator. We find it written in the book, the book of Psalms 135, starting with verse 15. It says, The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the works of man's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. They that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusts in them. It's sad. We find throughout the Bible, all throughout the Word of God, warnings about worshiping the creation instead of the Creator creates much confusion amongst people. And it is sad that so many are so confused when we now have truly the whole written word of God that we can find the answers to anything we're looking for if we seek it out. <clears throat> this is why the Lord's church has to, be, has to speak out on so many matters. And I pray that 2022 20, will be a year over 2,000 years after Christ was born, that the Lord's church will stand up again like we see in the days of the apostles and preach and teach about what is right and what is wrong and what is right in the sight of God and what is wrong in the sight of God and not let man decide what is right and what is wrong. Because if it's not right in the sight of God, it matters not what man thinks. This is so important. You know, you know, a really good thing to inspire people is Brother Paul, like any of the writings in the Bible. But you got to love the way he does this in Romans chapter 1. In Romans chapter 1, this is how we should feel in today and for 2022. Romans 1 15. Paul says, so as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. We could say are in Dearborn County or Indiana or anywhere in the world also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. 
to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. For there is a righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. This is how we should feel going in to the 2022 year. As a servant of the Lord our God, we need to feel this passion. We need not only to read this, we need to study it, we need to act upon it, we need to feel as Brother Paul felt. Can you imagine how he said that when he was speaking to the crowd that day? We need to be able to say, we're ready to preach the gospel message, the true gospel message as given to us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are ready to show the people what it takes to be saved. We are, should be saying very loudly, very proudly, that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and the salvation. To everyone that believeth, which means there's actions involved, and obeys. See, that's the whole trouble. People say they believe, but they don't believeth because they don't obey. And this is where we need to get people to understand what it takes to become a child of God. And we need to get them to understand that when one becomes a child of God, one becomes an heir. Heirs of God. Joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we might also be glorified together. Think about that. The Bible tells us, for as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. When we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, when we come up out of that watery grave and we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, we were on our way to heaven. But we have to do our works. We have to obey the commandments of Christ. This is all found in the book of Romans chapter 8. And this is a good book that one should study out and read. And really truly understand. So we can become good servants, good preachers, good spreaders of the gospel message that we find. You know... There's something else in Romans chapter 1, verse 18. And this is something, again, we read all the time, but maybe we should really read it and make sure we're not part of it. I do feel so many times when I talk to so many people from the Lord's church and they make up all these excuses about certain things, they really should read this. Because really in here, when you look at this, you can see that you're going to get yourself entangled with the devil if you're not careful in today's world, especially in this country. In Romans chapter 1, verse 18, we are told, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him... From the creation of the world we clearly see being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Change the glory of the uncorrupt of God into the image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creepy things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the cre creation more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vow afflictions, for even their women to change the natural use and to that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the women burned in their own, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working which is unseemly, and receiving it in itself, that recompense of that their error which was met. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind, to do these things which are 
not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covenous, malicious, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, magnets, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, venters of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affliction, impeccable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, the day which commits such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. This, my folks, are people we should not be supporting any way, shape, or form. You know, John tells us in 2 John, and it's so important that we really truly understand this, so many people say, well, this, is, this doesn't really spell it out truly. John really puts it in pretty simple terms where he says that <clears throat> look to yourselves in John, 2 John, the epistle of John, 2 John, in verse 8. Well, let's go with um, verse 7. He says, For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, many people claim they, they accept Jesus Christ, but then they go and tell you how to accept him, which has nothing to do with what we read in the Bible. So those people are not accepting Jesus Christ. That's what you have to understand. Just because they say they accept Jesus, they have to accept Jesus on his terms, not their terms. That makes them the Antichrist. But John tells us in verse 8, Look to yourselves that we lose not these things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgress and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. There come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Anyone who is doing the things we just read about in Romans chapter 1, verse 18 onward, and they're doing these things, we cannot say that they are a part of God's children. We cannot even support them in any way, shape, or form. We are to show them they are wrong, by God's ways. They are not doing righteousness. They are not doing godliness. They are following the devil. They are doing the will of the devil. And this is why it is so important that in 2022 we start teaching this to more and more people because we have so many people who are living a falseness that they think that they are against the murdering of a child, but yet they go and they support the people that do these things. They're against homosexuality, but they support the people to teach it to our children. This has to stop. This is not what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to stand up and point out these evils and not support them any way, shape, or form. We need to understand and teach this to the lost and dying world. You know, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 through 6, it says... God will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. You know, if John says we're not to even bid him good day, I'm sure he meant that we shouldn't be supporting him any way, shape, or form. Only one can be saved if one accepts Jesus Christ and is buried with Christ. And that is a truth that we need to get out into the world. You know, the main reason for confusion is simple. Man's lazy. We all are. We'd rather have somebody tell us what's right. We love when people tell us what's right that are educated because we feel like, oh, they know because they're educated. They took all this stuff. But you know, time and time again in the Bible, we talked about this last week, so here the wise men come to King Herod. And here King Herod summons the most learned men of the Jewish people, the scribes, the Pharisees, the priests. Ask him about the Christ. And they tell him, oh, the Christ is in Bethlehem. Tell them all about it. The wise men go and visit the Christ child, but they didn't. How wise were they? 
for not going to see the gift from God. Same thing we have today. Where people tell us all about how to be saved. But then we open up the Bible and it doesn't match. How can that be? Because that is what's wrong with the confused world today. They listen to man, not to the Bible. They listen to man, not to Jesus. Jesus is the creator of all things. And Jesus made and created a way for us to get to heaven. And yet, we think there's another way. You know, so many people think as long as I'm a good person, everything's going to be good. The Old Testament's here for our example. Think about the poor guy, the Ark of the Covenants falling off a wagon, and all he wants to do is keep the most holy thing at the time from touching the ground. But God said, do not touch. And he touched and he died. Back then it was instant death. Today we can repent for our sins. See, that's the beauty of today. We live in a time of grace. And that is so good to know. So when we mess up, we can go to God and ask for forgiveness. But God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33. It makes it very clear. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Well, what are the churches of the saints? That is the church that Jesus Christ built. And what our Lord's church should be doing is teaching what the Bible tells us, what the Lord has given to us. We have the written words of life. We have the written words, and we have everything we need, as we are told by John, the apostle, that we have all we need in order to find salvation. God is not the author of confusion. God gives us the Holy Ghost to direct us and help us understand his writings. God sent us one shepherd, that is Jesus Christ. And that shepherd is who we should be following, the one shepherd. So in 2022, we need to make it very clear that there's only one shepherd, there's only one way, and that way is through Jesus Christ, is how you get to the Father, our God in heaven. And it's a good time that the world start waking up and understanding this, because all other roads lead to death and destruction. You know, why does it tell us the road to hell is wide and broad, and many there be to find it, but the road to heaven is narrow pathway, and few find it. Jesus came to this earth and showed us the pathway. He came to this earth and offered to share with us his home in heaven on equal terms. He shares with us how to find eternal life. He shares with us that there's only one way to heaven, and that is through the church he built. And that is what our job is to share with others. I know it's not always a good thing. I know people get upset sometimes. But you know, if we get them upset where they will, I'm not saying get them upset uh, to a point they won't listen, but get them so they say, look, show me where I am wrong. And if I am wrong, please show me so I can be on the same right path as you are. And that usually will stop everything because they can't show you the wrong way where well, I can show you what the Lord says that's what we have to be able to do so the Bible the word of God we as servants of Christ that is our job to share this with others what we need to do is get people to understand are you a Christian are you a Christian as the Bible shows you or are you a Christian as man shows you? You see, the Bible shows you what Jesus tells us we have to do to be a Christian. Man has their own doctrine. We have the apostles' doctrine. This is things that we need to get people to understand. And it's sometimes it is, ta it is hard because we have 2,000 years of people doing it wrong. You know, people need to understand it is so important. One has to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That is important. It has to happen. Then one 
has to be baptized. One has to be immersed. One has to go underneath that watery grave and come up with a new creature in Christ. And then one will have the gift of the Holy Ghost. And when one has a gift of the Holy Ghost, one needs to start studying. They need to start praying. They need to get all they can in their body, especially in the first 30 days, in my opinion, because the devil is going to come after you with a vengeance because he wants you back. But if you don't have the blood of Christ, when death comes, he will not pass over you. You will be in trouble. You know, and the other thing is, is to our brothers and sisters who have strayed, who have fallen away, wouldn't 2022 be a great year to get them back? Get them to come back and see what it takes to become one with Christ again? They already made the choice to be one with Christ. They chose to go another way. Maybe it's no fault of their own per se. Maybe if they just sat down and thought about it, they would realize they could repent and be back. As long as you are alive, I truly believe the Lord's arm is not too short that he cannot save. But we have to reach up. It's our iniquities that separate us and our Lord from each other. 2022 would be a great year to find out that Jesus is the best friend you will ever have. And he's a friend to all who will accept him. And he was a friend for eternity. So let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We are to fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You know, one of the neatest sayings Abraham Lincoln ever said. He says, Sir, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. What a way to look at that. When we're trying to spread the gospel message, we want to be on God's side. We want to do it the way God laid out in his word, so that we're doing it right. We do not want to add to or take away from the word of God. Because when you preach Jesus the way Jesus is preached and the way it's supposed to be preached, through the gospel message and we lift Jesus up, it draws men to him. Amen. I will arise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior.